I'm Sonia Morton Firth and today I'm interviewing the professional boxer Amir Khan. We talk about Amir's fight, this time not in the ring, but his fight against COVID-19. It wouldn't be an interview with Amir without discussing the future of boxing. And he talks about when he's likely to step back in the ring again. Yeah, thank you so much for being a guest on my show, especially I know this is during Ramadan. So thank you so much. I hope you're not too hungry. Have you had your dinner yet? <laughs> I've not had my dinner yet, no. So we've got another maybe uh, two hours to go. Um, <laughs> well, don't worry, I'm sure go by quick. Hours. So two hours. <laughs> well, I'm not going to keep... You know, you... That, those last two hours are the worst hours. There must be. You must be starving. Well, look, normally I'm guessing you'd be interviewed about your boxing, but today I wanted to talk about a different fight, and that's the fight that you're doing against COVID-19. Can you tell me a little bit more about what efforts you've been doing to help support the NHS? Yeah, so um, I've got the Amiocon Foundation, and I decided to... Um, you know, get a group of my team together and we sat down, we talked how we can help our community, how we, how we can help our people locally. And uh, we decided to drop off uh, food boxes, food bags to the less fortunate people who need our help, who need our support. There's a lot of people who have not left their house since this COVID-19 has uh, come up and we wanted to do our little bit. And also um, we've gone to the, the key workers, the, those who are working at hospitals, um, the fire station, even these healthcare homes, we've been going to them and giving them food boxes and 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 sanitizers and stuff like that. Really, and face masks and face visors, even to the nurses. We, uh, the last time it was only yesterday. I went to give a um, hundred face visors to Bolton, uh, and then went to Manchester Hospital to give them to them. So, um, I just hope that everyone doing their little bit. And obviously, because um, I've got my own foundation, I've just done it through that and. It makes me happy that I can I can do something for the people that need our help. And and how are you being received, Amir? Are people actually recognizing you, or are you wearing masks? I mean, how how are the people receiving um, you? Because I was wearing a mask, and I I said to one uh, one family, "This is from Amir Khan's foundation, and we just want to give you this." And they go, oh wow, can we meet Amir Khan? And I was like, "Oh well, he's uh, he's not here at the moment, so." Uh, because of the COVID, he'll come see you hopefully after all the sends. And she's like, oh, please send him over to the house. <laughs> so yeah, I always get uh, people asking who's under the mask, but I never put my mask down. <laughs> um, or they ask where Amir is and stuff, and I always have to lie for myself. So oh, it's quite no. funny. And I bet you're just dying to go, it's me, <laughs> it's me behind the mask. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's always nice. And, you know, you can put a smile on the face, but because it's just the, the, the situation we're all in at the moment, you just don't know that by putting your mask down, you can, something can happen. Look, I've got a family, I've got kids, and I just don't want to catch something off someone and, God forbid, I bring it home. Yeah, no, I completely understand. Um, and I understand you've also donated a building, is that correct? So, yeah, I wanted to donate my, um, I've got a big banqueting hall I'm building, uh, it's about 60,000 square foot. So I want to give that to the NHS to say, listen, if you guys are uh, finding it hard to get your, uh, to get patients inside hospitals or anything, I'm willing to give this place to you so you've got enough space, you can do it, we can do whatever you want in it before I, because this is just, I'm at a stage where I'm doing my interior side, so I was willing to put everything on hold and let the NHS take over and use it. But then the Bolton NHS got in touch with me and said that we want to thank you. And uh, we've spoke to the Greater Manchester team and everyone. And the numbers are quite low at the moment. But if, God forbid, they do rise high, we will be in touch. And we, we thank you for the amazing offer you give us. So, I mean, they were happy that I offered it to them. And I just feel that while we are going through this time, this is where everyone has to stick together. Everyone has to do something for one another. And I think if everyone helps a little, you know, I'm sure this uh, will quite quickly end. What actually motivates you to do this, Amir? Because I know this this isn't the only charity work that you've done. You're you're not a stranger to helping other to, to helping people and support people. I think it came up when uh, I was at home with family, and I kept seeing on the news that so many people are suffering and need help. Um, food is hard to, for people are stuck at home and they can't leave the house to go get in food and a lot of the shopping markets were closed and 
I have a few friends who own cash and carries and I thought to myself, why don't I first get in touch with them, see if they will send me some stuff. Uh, and it went from there really. And then uh, I, um, I started to go out to different um, like food uh, banks and, and give food to them. And then started to think, instead of me giving them, I might as well do it myself and be there myself and handing, ha- handing the food out myself. Because, you know, when you hand it out yourself, I could be one of them personalities that goes there just for the cameras and then leaves. But I thought, no, nah, I want to be there till the end. I want to sh- see everything from the start. So I was the first there and the last one to leave. And I wanted to see everything that happened that was going on. And since um, I started it, I mean, already... I've got a team now in uh, in Birmingham who's doing something. I've got a team in London that next week we're going to be distributing. I'm going to be also next week in Peterborough where I'm going to be distributing wow. food. And I like to go there myself. Instead of having a team there doing it for you, um, I'd rather be there myself because at the end of the day, it's my name on the line. You know, it's Amir Khan Foundation and people would like to see Amir Khan there. So I like to be hands-on. I think it must lift spirits as well, especially amongst your own team. Is it is it a team of volunteers that you've got that help you in the foundation? That's right, yeah. So I've got a team of volunteers and also um, I've got a team of my, my own trustees who also uh, play a big part in helping me. And it's a, it's a team thing. This is, um, this is where we all stick together and even those that want to, uh, who have come on volunteers, I mean, who have volunteered to help I've got them from literally Instagram and Facebook. I, I messaged them and they messaged me back and emailed uh, the, the team and the team have got back to them to say, yeah, would you like to help Amir volunteer on helping? And they're like, yeah, we would love to do that. And so, yeah, they come along and they get to spend some time with me helping the less fortunate people and helping the community. It's great. And obviously these must be your fans, so you're making their day as well. And tell me, you Exactly. Have- and I think it's also good because it just makes you feel like, look, even though you've got fans there, they, 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 they like you that much that they want to come and help you as well. And instead of, you know, I can just imagine how hard it would be to find a group of people to come and help you and support you in, in this tough time. Because obviously they are risking their life. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to thank them because I've had thousands of people hit me up and saying, look, can we help? Can we help? And I just thank them all for that. That's fantastic. Amir, how have you been coping in lockdown? How's your life changed? Um, it's been a little different, obviously, uh, not being able to go to the boxing gym to do my training and everything. And it, I do find it quite hard training at home. See, it's very hard to motivate yourself when you're at home. You've not got the machines, you've not got the boxing <laughs> bag and everything. Are you the same, yeah? I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a boxer. I'm not a boxer, but I am. I'm, a, I'm, I'm more of a... I like lifting weights. Yeah, I'm more of a physique athlete. But uh, yeah. yeah, I miss the gym. I miss the gym. Exactly. But I mean, wh- whatever it is, see, we miss the gym. And you know what motivates you is when you walk into a gym and you hear, like for me, is when you hear the bag being punched and when you hear the pads being punched out and you hear the skipping rope and the machines that are being used. Because that kind of just kind of lifts your spirit and think I'm going to do this as well I want to get into it it gets you in the mood of doing it when you're at home there's no one but you training and it kind of is a little bit hard and the weather out there so we have good days we have cold days and it's very hard to motivate yourself outside in the garden when it's, when it's raining or when it's really <laughs> super cold have your kids been helping you? <laughs> I have I, but to be honest with you, I have been doing some training while I've been here at home had my kids doing some press ups and sit ups with me and stuff, and do some little sprints with them. So I have been running around with them, doing a bit of a little bit of exercise. I even take them for a little walk, or maybe I'll jog and they can ride their bike and follow me. So yeah, we've been doing a little bit like that. Now I couldn't have this interview with asking you a little bit more about the boxing scene. How do you think COVID nineteen yeah. is going to affect the sport going forward? Well, I think it is going to be affected. Uh, and I think already you see that there's a lot of talk about uh, having boxing events behind closed doors. Mm. Now, um, not having fan base there, I think it's going to be very hard to motivate yourself. Just recently, I saw an MMA fight, a UFC fight, which was behind closed doors. And there was no fans there, but it was a big fight. And obviously, it just wasn't the same. You know, the buzz wasn't there. The lights weren't the same. I mean, not having fans there, is uh, is not gonna really motivate the the fighters. You can see both fighters when they were in the in the cage fighting, 
uh, there was no motivation. It was just like they, was, they were there for a sparring session. Because it's the energy, but I guess, from, you get from the room that lifts energy you. Energy from the group, yeah, from the people, from the from the fans, the energy you get, them screaming, shouting, and it just, um, it did seem right, you know, when I was watching it on, uh, on, on, on TV. So I just feel that I think um, it's going to be a very long time till boxing um, gets back on track again. I think hopefully next year, early next year, we can probably have our fights back on again and get back in the ring and put on great performances. But at this moment in time, we don't know where this is going. We don't know how long the lockdown is going to be till. And we don't know when we are allowed to um, put on shows and mix with, mix with our loved ones and with our people. Mm. When do you think you'll be back in the ring? And uh, do you think you'll be back in the ring? Have you got sort of future plans? Yeah, I want to be. Oh, definitely, I want to be back in the ring again. And I think for me, it will be um, probably early next year. Then, depending. I mean, I wanted to fight in March, to be honest with you. But who's that's when the, the COVID who's the next fighter? Too. Who do you want to? Who's your name? Um, I'm looking at some names at the moment. Look, I'd love to fight Manny Pacquiao. I mean, that's a name that I'm, I've, I've always been chasing. And if I can get that fight, that'd be amazing. But um, Look, there's so many names out there now in the in the world that you can fight, especially in the world um, welterweight division. Which I mean, there's some good tasty fighters in there. So I look at all options. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, it's just uh, knowing when we're allowed to see. Because even when you're training, what are you training for? You need that motivation. What you're training for? Uh, I'm in good shape, but I'm thinking, okay, do I need to get in better shape? No, I mean, but if they have, a, if I have a goal, end goal, which is maybe have a fight a date then I can be like okay I'm going to chase that date now I'm going to train for that date and for that fight that's my motivation but at this moment in time it's hard because if I if I start training hard now by the time the fight comes there it comes next year end of next year then I'm going to be worn out by then right maybe you know worked out worn yeah. out yeah worn out I'm going to be overtrained how long does it normally take how long does it normally take you to get in condition for a fight um takes me a little bit I normally give myself 10 weeks 10 weeks and that, that's 10 weeks of like um, eating clean, uh, training, uh, do my strength conditioning and also boxing. Are you still training with a coach now while you're in lockdown? Uh, I don't know if you can do it. Can't, no, I, I can't do it with a coach. You can't? No, I can't do it with a coach, no. Um, see, because I've got young kids and I want to try to stay away from as many people as I can. Um, but what I'm doing is I am doing like a lot of training on my own, like shadow boxing or some exercises outside, press up, sit up, squats, and go for a little jog now and then, go for a walk with the kids. So kind of keep myself busy. What do you think we've, when all this is over with in six months' time, what, do you, what lessons do you think we can learn from this? I think what we can learn from it is we're going to start to appreciate what we have and the things around us and appreciate your family, your friends, mm -hmm. especially because... Yeah. We've not been seeing our friend. We've not been. We, we can't go for a walk to a corner shop. See, we we took everything for granted. A lot of people did, and you think, oh yeah, we can get this and we can get that. But now being locked in, not being allowed to go out anywhere, makes you realize that the things that we did have, the amazing things that we did have, we don't have anymore. So I just feel that um, you know we're gonna just appreciate everything around us, every little second out with our family, with our friends, and everyone. We're gonna appreciate that. So I think that's what it's all about. It's all about um, appreciating what we've got. And, and, and when we don't have it, that's when we realise that, you know, we don't have these things and we really want it. So, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that I feel um, we, we've missed. And, it's pretty, and it makes you understand as well how much we missed it as well. Yeah, completely. Absolutely. Amir, if there's, if there's anyone watching that wants to donate to your foundation, how do they go about and do that? And obviously I'll take any links as well and put those in the notes. Yeah, so I mean, the best way of doing it, look, we want to be very transparent with everyone to show where their money's been spent. See, that's one thing about charity, which I've always done, is that made sure that where every penny has been spent, because it's not my money, it's what people have donated. And even though like most of the stuff I've, I've, I, I put my own money into it just to get, the, get everything running and get everything going so people start having confidence that where the money's going and it's going to be spent the right way. So we have the AmirKhanFoundation.com um, uh, Amir website where you can donate on there. There's a link that you can click and yeah, I'll put a link. to your donation. I'll put a link oh, thank you. The and I think every look, every penny is going to make a massive difference. I mean, I was just looking at a box uh, because we've been working with uh, the, 
the Cash and Carries we've been working with. Um, I'd like to announce this as well. I've just done. I've just uh, partnered up with Poundland. Who ah. They are going to be supplying us. Yeah, yeah, I believe. See, it. I don't know if we've got Poundland in London. It's a bit posh to have it. I'm up posh where you are. <laughs> well, I'm from up north, so I know what Poundland is. <laughs> yeah. So, so we've just done a deal. We've just partnered Poundland, and they are going to start supplying us with all. Uh, stuff and it's amazing that they got in touch with me to say can we please help and do our little bit and I was like okay they go, can you send us a list of what you need or what you're going to have in the boxes I sent them a list and they've literally sent everything to me wow. so it was amazing so for me looking at f- f- uh, feeding maybe 200 families I've gone up to like maybe 500 families now I'm able to go out there leave even more and feed more people so I thank Poundland for being part of this and I think it's just a great gesture that they've, they've come up and got in touch with me knowing that this is a time where everyone needs help. That's fantastic. I mean, and is there anyone else that you plan to partner up with? Is anyone out there that you'd like to do a um, shout out to? No, at this moment in time, everything we do, we're doing it ourselves because I'm a little bit, um, I'm, I, I kind of get a little bit insecure when I, I give money out to a different charity. I don't know where that money's going. And nowadays, a lot of these charities are taking huge amount of um, say someone donates they'll take half of that for like an administration fee I don't like working like that whatever someone if someone gives me a pound a pound will go into charity I'm 100% on profit charity so um, I want to make sure that every penny goes to those that need it so every, I, everything I do is on the Amicom Foundation and Amicom Foundation has been going on for now f- uh, five six years and um, we want to make sure that we, we sh- show everything that we do and everyone's happy with what we do as well that's amazing. Now, I know your inspiration is Muhammad Ali. What, yeah. what, do, you, what do you think Muhammad would be doing at this, at this, if, if he was around today in this, this pandemic, these crazy times that we're living? You see, um, he's the one who inspired me doing more charity work and doing things for people. Uh, he was more of a champion, not only in the ring, but outside the ring. Of course. And I think if Muhammad Very Ali now was here, yeah. definitely. And if Muhammad Ali was around now, I think he would have been a voice everybody he would have given us given us all confidence and definitely got involved with charity work and maybe spoke out about what we need to hear amir it's been wonderful absolutely wonderful to have you on my show i just want to say you're doing amazing amazing work and from my heart to your heart namaste thank you so much thank thank you you very much much. it's been a pleasure speaking to you thank you you take care of yourself anyway